In Chapter 1 of The Interpretation of Cultures, Clifford Gertz introduces his concept of thick description as an interpretive theory for understanding culture. He argues that the study and interpretation of cultures should be based on a detailed examination or thick description rather than generalizations about human behavior. According to Gertz, this approach allows us to understand how people make sense of their lives in different cultural contexts by looking at both individual actions and larger social patterns. To illustrate his point he uses examples from various societies such as Balinese cockfighting rituals which are used not only for entertainment but also serve symbolic purposes related to status within society, Moroccan marketplaces where bargaining is seen more like a game with its own set rules, and American football games which have become highly ritualized events full symbolism associated with them beyond just playing the sport itself. By examining these specific cases through thick descriptions we can gain insight into what makes each one unique while still being able to draw comparisons between them do ultimately all humans share certain basic needs regardless our particular context or environment in conclusion. Gertz emphasizes that it is important when studying any given culture take time observe closely before making assumptions so that true meaning behind behaviors may revealed without bias towards preconceived. Notions about other people's ways life. In Chapter 2 of The Interpretation of Cultures, Clifford Gertz examines the impact that culture has had on our understanding and interpretation of man. He begins by discussing how anthropologists have traditionally viewed human behavior as a product or reflection of cultural values rather than individual traits. This view is in contrast to traditional Western thought which sees humans primarily through an individualistic lens, this leads to different interpretations when it comes to explaining why people behave certain ways. For example, while some may attribute criminal activity solely to personal characteristics such as greed or laziness, others might point out that these behaviors are also shaped by social norms and expectations within particular cultures. Gertz then goes on to discuss how various theories about the nature and function of culture can be used for interpreting human behavior across society's functionalism, which views society like a machine with each part having its own purpose, structural functionalism, which looks at relationships between parts, symbolic anthropology, where symbols represent shared meanings. Finally he argues that all three approaches provide useful insights into understanding humanity but none alone can explain everything we observe in any given situation, instead they must work together if we want accurate explanations for complex phenomena like crime rates or religious beliefs among diverse populations around world today. Chapter 3 of The Interpretation of Cultures by Clifford Gertz focuses on the growth and evolution of culture. He begins with a discussion about how cultures are shaped through their interactions, both internally within societies as well as externally between different groups. This is followed by an exploration into the concept that cultural development can be seen in terms of two distinct processes adaptation to environment, which includes technological advances, and symbolic elaboration, the creation or modification of symbols. These processes interact together to create complex systems which shape our understanding and experience. Gertz then moves on to discussing what he calls cultural drift, changes in beliefs, values, norms etc., over time due to external influences such as contact with other cultures or new technologies being introduced from outside sources before exploring some specific examples including religion, language change slash evolutionary linguistics and art history slash aesthetics. Finally, he concludes his chapter by arguing for a more holistic approach when studying culture, one which takes into account not only its material aspects but also its psychological ones too i.e., looking at it from both an internal perspective, how people think and feel, alongside external factors like technology and economics etc. In Chapter 4 of The Interpretation of Cultures, Clifford Gertz examines religion as a cultural system. He begins by discussing the concept that religious symbols are used to express and interpret social reality in order to create meaning for individuals within their culture. This is done through rituals which serve both practical and symbolic functions, they provide an opportunity for members of society to come together with shared beliefs while also providing them with tangible benefits such as food or shelter. Additionally, these rituals can be seen as expressions of collective identity since they often involve specific dress codes or language usage associated with particular religions. Gertz then goes on to discuss how different cultures have developed various ways in which religious symbolism is expressed some use elaborate ceremonies involving music and dance while others rely more heavily upon written texts like scripture or prayer books. 
Still other societies may focus primarily on personal experience rather than any external formality when it comes expressing faith-based ideas about life's purposes. In all cases though, he argues that there must exist a set patterned relations between symbolically constituted worlds, which makes up what we call religion. He further explains this idea by looking at two distinct types of ritual behavior found among certain African tribes, the first being divination, or fortune-telling, where people seek guidance from supernatural forces regarding important decisions slash events happening around them. Second type involves sacrifices made either directly towards God slash spirits themselves or indirectly via offerings given away during special occasions such festivals etc. These activities demonstrate how even seemingly disparate practices can ultimately share common elements if viewed under larger umbrella term religion. Finally concluding his chapter Gert states religious systems are not only forms but also contents not just structures but meanings thus emphasizing importance understanding context behind each individual belief before attempting make generalizations across entire field study. Chapter 5 of the Interpretation of Cultures by Clifford Gertz focuses on the concept and practice of person, time, and conduct in Bali. He begins with an examination into Balinese conceptions about persons as being composed not only from physical bodies but also spiritual elements such as souls or spirits that are believed to be reincarnated over multiple lifetimes. This is further explored through a discussion regarding how these beliefs shape their understanding around death rituals which involve elaborate ceremonies for both living relatives who have passed away and those whose deaths occurred long ago. Additionally, he looks at how this conception influences other aspects like marriage customs where couples must seek approval from ancestors before they can wed each other, even if one partner has already died prior to the union taking place. Finally there's an exploration into notions surrounding time within Balinese culture, specifically its cyclical nature rather than linear progression along with some examples given related to festivals held throughout different seasons slash months every year, example, Galungan. Altogether then it becomes clear just how deeply embedded concepts concerning personhood and temporality are woven into everyday life practices amongst people living in Bali today something which ultimately serves as testament towards why so many outsiders find themselves captivated by its unique charm. Chapter 6 of The Interpretation of Cultures by Clifford Gertz focuses on the Balinese cockfight, which is a ritualized form of gambling. He explains that it serves as an expression and reinforcement for social values in Bali such as status, honor, courage and luck. It also provides entertainment to those who participate or watch the fights. In addition to this he discusses how betting works during these events, Bets are placed between two people with one person taking both sides while others bet against each other directly without any intermediary involved. Furthermore he talks about how there is no real winner since all participants have something at stake regardless if they win or lose money from their wagers due to its symbolic nature where everyone has equal chances when participating in a fight even though some may be more experienced than others thus having better odds overall but still not guaranteed success every time out. Either way making them vulnerable just like anyone else playing alongside them. Finally Gertz concludes his chapter discussing why certain aspects make up what makes Bali so unique compared other cultures around world through analyzing different elements found within traditional rituals such as cockfighting which can provide insight into understanding culture itself much deeper level than surface observations alone could ever do justice to. Chapter 7 of The Interpretation of Cultures by Clifford Gertz focuses on the theater state in 19th century Bali. He argues that Balinese culture was based upon a theatrical model, where each person had to play their part and act out certain roles as prescribed by tradition. This system allowed for an ordered society with clear rules and regulations which were enforced through ritual performances such as dance dramas or shadow puppet plays. The king acted as both director and audience, watching over his subjects from above while also providing them with guidance when needed. In addition to this hierarchical structure there existed various other forms of social organization including caste systems, patron-slash-client relationships between nobles and commoners alike, village councils responsible for local affairs etc. All these elements combined together created what Gertz calls theater state, a complex yet highly organized form of government which enabled the people living within it to live harmoniously despite their differences in status or wealth. Chapter 8 of The Interpretation of Cultures by Clifford Gertz focuses on the concept and importance of local knowledge. 
He argues that it is essential to understand a culture in order to interpret its meaning, as well as how this understanding can be used for practical purposes such as policy making or development planning. To illustrate his point he uses examples from various cultures including Balinese cockfighting, Javanese shadow puppetry and Moroccan marketplaces. In each case he shows how an appreciation for local knowledge allows us to better comprehend cultural practices which may otherwise seem strange or incomprehensible when viewed through Western eyes alone. Furthermore, Gertz emphasizes the need for anthropologists not only to observe but also actively participate in their research subjects' lives if they are truly going gain insight into them, something which requires both empathy and humility on behalf of researchers themselves who must recognize their own limitations while attempting cross-cultural analysis. In Chapter 9, Clifford Gertz examines the impact of his four decades as an anthropologist in two countries Morocco and Indonesia. He begins by discussing how he came to be interested in both cultures, Morocco through a chance encounter with its people while traveling abroad, Indonesia due to being invited there for fieldwork after completing graduate school. In each country, he found himself drawn into different aspects of their culture that would eventually become central themes throughout his career religion, in Morocco, and politics, in Indonesia. Gertz then goes on to discuss some key moments from these experiences which shaped him professionally such as when he was arrested during student protests against President Sukarno's regime or when Moroccan villagers welcomed him despite not knowing who exactly they were hosting at first glance. These events helped shape Gertz's understanding of anthropology itself, namely that it is more than just studying other societies but also about engaging with them personally so one can gain insight into what makes them tick culturally speaking. He concludes this chapter by reflecting upon the importance of having multiple perspectives within any given society since no single viewpoint will ever capture all facets accurately enough without bias creeping in somewhere along the way something which has been reinforced over time thanks largely due to globalization making cross-cultural exchange easier than before thus allowing us access new ways thinking about our own lives too. Chapter 10 of The Interpretation of Cultures by Clifford Gertz focuses on the role and responsibility that anthropologists have as authors. He argues that, in order to be successful at their work, they must not only understand what is being studied but also how it should be presented. In this chapter he discusses various aspects such as fieldwork techniques used for gathering data, writing styles employed when presenting findings, ethical considerations related to publishing research results, and finally the importance of self-reflection while engaging with a culture different from one's own. Gertz emphasizes throughout his discussion that an anthropologist's job does not end once they return home after completing fieldwork, rather, there are still many tasks left before any meaningful conclusions can be drawn or shared publicly about another society or culture which has been observed during study abroad trips. This includes carefully considering all available evidence collected through interviews slash observations prior to making generalizations based off limited information gathered over short periods time spent within foreign communities, i.e., thick description. Additionally, due diligence needs taken into account regarding potential biases present both inside oneself, as well those found among informants, so these do not inadvertently influence interpretations made later downline when analyzing data sets obtained via ethnographic methods utilized earlier on-site visits conducted overseas locations visited previously by researchers. Ultimately though regardless if working alone independently or collaboratively alongside other scholars involved same project ultimately each individual author will need take ownership final product produced since name attached publication reflects upon reputation entire profession itself. Therefore outro conclusion reached here then would suggest even more important than simply understanding cultures themselves may very well liability accurately communicate them others effectively too without losing sight original intent behind why we're studying begin with namely because we want learn something new ourselves better appreciate world around us live our lives accordingly afterwards.